Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be showing you two simple ways to create border frames for your effects on Facebook and Instagram. The first way I'll be showing you is inside of Spark AR using rectangles, and the second one is using a photo editing program. I'm gonna be using GIMP, but you can use anything, Photoshop, Pixar, whatever you like, uh, to create a template that we can import and reuse in multiple projects. So I'm gonna be showing you how to create a full frame effect for one camera, uh, but if you stick around to the end or check the link in the description, you'll be able to find out a little bit more about the template package that I'm working on. That includes a lot more frames uh, with a lot more camera setups and even some example projects that you can download and try for yourself. So with that being said, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment if you made it all the way through, and don't forget to subscribe because we're just about to hit uh, 801 subscribers, and that would be amazing. You could be the one. So let's pause this and we'll get straight into the effect. Create a new project and here we go. Okay, so here we are over in our new project. I'm not gonna switch over to the FaceTime camera for this one because my computer's running a bit slow today. But what we are gonna do is add a background to our scene. So the first thing we want is a rectangle that will appear nested inside of this canvas. So I'm just gonna rename both of those to background or background and then I'll name this rectangle BG. Now I'm gonna adjust the size to fill height and fill width just to cover the initial camera that we had, the, the background layer with the camera on it. Okay, and now I'm gonna create a material also called BG and change the shader type of that to flat. Next thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this background canvas up here and I can close that now because I don't really need it anymore. Now I'm gonna rename this setup one because that's our first setup and then we can call this one, rename it from background to camera. Now what we're gonna do is come up to our camera in the scene and hit texture extraction. That will create this texture here, camera textures down in the assets panel. What we're gonna do next is come up back to our camera inside of our scene and we're gonna create a new material for it. Rename that camera, change the shader type to flat and then add under textures in the shader properties menu, add your camera texture here and now we have basically duplicated exactly what we had at the very start when we created our new project but now there's a white background behind us which is exactly what we want. So the next thing we're gonna do now is come back into our setup one and where we have this camera here, I'm gonna duplicate that once and I'm gonna rename it frame and I'm gonna duplicate the frame until I have four of them. So the first method I'm gonna show you is how to create a, for, uh, a border frame inside of Spark. And to do that, we're going to rename all of these now. So we have frame left, frame right, frame top and frame bottom. Because in order to do it inside of Spark, you actually have to create four separate rectangles. So we're gonna go frame left and frame right. We're gonna highlight both of those. And then for the width, we're gonna change that to 10 pixels. And then the same thing for this, the frame top and frame bottom. But instead of the width, we're gonna change the height to 10 pixels. Okay, and you can almost see it here now. Uh, if, I, if I highlight all of these and then add a new material, because right now we're on the camera texture, so you can actually see the camera just like being stretched along the top and the, right, on the left. But if I create a new material and I just call that frame, then I can recolor that now <laughs> to uh, set the shader type to flat, first of all. And then if I recolor it here to black, then it's much more visible. You can see it clearly now along the top and on the, along the left. But what I wanna do now is come down to our right one because our left and right one are at the moment, if I switch over to the 2D view, you'll see I can click on the left one and I can click on the right one and they're both in the same position because the default position is zero, zero. So they start in this top corner and stretch out from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the frame right and I'm just gonna, under this alignment section, I'm gonna hit this one and align it to the right side of the screen. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for frame bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna align that to the bottom of the screen. And now, as you can see, I have a nice black border around the edge. Uh, and you can, of course, if you wanted to adjust the height or the width of this, so it doesn't have to be 10 pixels, it could be 20 and you could change that to be 20 as well. And then you have a little bit of a thicker border, which is pretty cool. Uh, but then you will have to readjust. So m just make sure that your alignments are back in place. So the right one and the bottom one there, I just have to realign those. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna leave them exactly the size that they are for now. So we'll undo all of that. Right now they're at 10 on the width and 10 on the height. So once we've got that done, we've got a simple border there that's basically the entire effect you can leave it at that and you can do this every time you create a new project you can have your little setup with the camera 
and you can have these four rectangles that represent your border frames. The problem with this is it gets a little bit complicated once you start animating or adding tap to change features or anything like that. If you want to resize your image or move the, the camera uh, display around or anything like that, then it starts to get a little bit convoluted inside the patch graph. So what I'm going to show you next is the alternative method, uh, and that is to create a template so that we can import it into Spark and reuse it every time we need a new frame in our scene or in any project that we're making. Okay, so if I pause this now, then we can go over to GIMP, uh, which is the photo editing software that I'm using. Obviously, uh, if you're using something different, that's completely fine, but this tutorial will be based on my understanding of GIMP because I don't really have Photoshop or anything like that. So yeah, let's jump over to GIMP now and I'll show you how to create a border template. Okay, so here we are now over in GIMP and the first thing I'm gonna do is open up a new project. As you can see, the default image size is 1920 by 1080. All I'm gonna do is reverse that. So now it's 1080 by 1920. That'll move it from a horizontal uh, YouTube style display to a vertical mobile phone display, which is what we want. If your background is white by default, then hit this paint bucket, make sure your color's set to black and just color that in because I'll be creating uh, white borders inside of GIMP for importing into Spark just so that you can use them in the alpha channel as well. Uh, you can create black ones, it will work exactly the same way, but you won't be able to add patch interactions and things like that. So I prefer to make mine in white. You can do anything you like. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can add a new layer to our scene. Uh, we're gonna call this one left because it's gonna go along the left-hand side. And I, would wa I want mine to be around 2.5% of the total screen size. So if I take 1080 here for the width and I divide that by 10, then we get 108. So that's 10% of the width, which means our border will be 10% on either side. If I half that again, we end up at 54. And if I go down to 27, that is 2.5% of the width of uh, the display. So 1080, 2.5% uh, of that is 27. So if you hit OK and make that, it will create this layer here, which is the full height of the screen. So I forgot to mention that. If I create a new one quickly, you'll see the height is still 1920, but the width I've reduced down to 27 now. So if I come into our paint bucket, switch over to white and just color that in, you can already see it starting to take shape. Now, if I come down to this layer that I've created and I hit duplicate, I can rename it to right. And now it's exactly the same. It's in the same place right now, just sitting on top of the previous layer, the left layer. So what I'm gonna do in, uh, next is come up to this alignment tool. You can hit Q for the shortcut to open this menu. And then what I wanna do is click on this layer, make sure that it's relative to the active layer. It might be a uh, relative to selection or to image. Make sure it's relative to your active layer. And then make sure that your background is the active layer. Because what we wanna do is align it based on the background image that we have, which is the 1080 by 1920, and not this image, which is a very thin, very small one. So now that we have our background layer as the active image, uh, as the active layer, we will make sure that we have this layer highlighted in our alignment tool. And then using the distribute align, we're just going to hit right. And now it will align it to the right side of the screen based on this active layer, which is our background layer here. If you do it uh, and you try and align based on this, so let's say I wanna move the right one here, but I wanna do it based on this left layer. It won't, it won't make, it won't move back. See, it will move across to the left, but now it won't go back. So if I undo that, then we get back to where we were. But yeah, make sure that your active layer is the background layer when you're realigning things in layers above. Uh, but yeah, now we're gonna do that again. So rather than duplicate this, I'm gonna go create new layer. And this time, instead of the width being 27, we're gonna leave the width at 1080, and I'm gonna make the height 27. So that it's also 2.5% the width of, uh, the screen. So the borders themselves will be the same width all the way around. Uh, you can use the height or the width to determine the, uh, the, the thickness of your borders, but for this example, I'm using the width. So it's 2.5% of the width of the screen rather than 2.5% of the height. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna paint that now, make sure that it's white as well. And we can leave that where it is, uh, rename it to top, and then duplicate the layer, rename that to bottom, and do the exact same thing again. So we hit Q, that comes up the alignment tool. You wanna to make sure that this is selected, our new bottom layer, and then make sure that your background layer is the active layer. So now when we hit bottom in our distribute align, then it will drop it all the way to the bottom. And now we have our frame. 
So if we make this background layer invisible now, you see we have our four frames all set up pretty well. What you can do at this point is uh, merge them down. So you can merge it all into one uh, layer here if you want, and then you can export it like that. Uh, duh -duh. Or you can just leave it as it is and export visible layers. But make sure that your background layer is invisible and that these have alpha channels enabled so that there's a PNG and no background. So now if I hit export, we can export this to the desktop. We call it uh, white frame 2.5%. Uh, and then we'll save that to the desktop, export that. And now we'll go back to Spark AR. See you in a sec. Okay, so here we are back in Spark and we have our white frame down here on the desktop. So I'm gonna drag that over and import it into our assets panel here. You can see it now and you can see a little preview of it down here. Just make sure that you hit no compression under the manual compression option because it will create a clearer image when you export it to your phone. What I'm gonna do now is create a new setup. So I'll close that one and I'll close that one for the time being. And we can add a new object, uh, make a canvas, rename that one setup2, and I'll add a rectangle to that canvas, which I will rename camera and duplicate it frame. So this is exactly the same as before. We just fill width, fill height, uh, make this the camera material that we've already set up and make this one here the frame. We're gonna create a new frame material just to show you the difference between the two. I'm gonna name this one frame two and change the shader type of this to flat as well. And now what I'm gonna do is you can just add into textures here. You could just add your white frame like this. You could change the color of it to anything you like and you have your, your border just like that. Very simple, very easy. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to remove it from that texture, the diffuse texture here, and I'm going to check this alpha box instead. And now if I add it here instead, it creates the same effect. You could still change the colors just like you would if it was a diffuse texture. But you can also now add patch interactions too. So if I hit up here, view patch editor, then what I can do is from the library here, select a patch. Uh, just as an example, I'm going to use the color cycle patch. So if you search for that, you'll be able to find it. What this does is creates a random cycling color effect. You can just add it to a background or to a camera texture or anything you like. But what I'm gonna do is drag it in here and connect it up to our frame here. So we'll add the regular diffuse texture as a patch, connect that up here. And now as you can see, this is working as we wanted. It's currently set at duration of one. So if I increase that to 15 seconds, uh, then you can also check this box random start and obviously you have to make sure that you set this back to white to have the best effect. If you set it to black, if you change the color here to black, it will just be black. Uh, and if you change it to something in between, it will create sim similar color changing effects, but they will be in a, like a narrower spectrum of color. If you make it white, then you get the full spectrum uh, and it will cycle through effects like this. So now you have this interactive border. You can control select both of these in here and adjust the size of it. So you can move them around and pretty much anything you want. What I'm actually gonna do here is show you how to add some interaction too. So we'll add a screen tap down here, connect that to a counter, and then a couple of equals exactly. So I'll add one and then I'll duplicate it because we only have two at the moment. Make sure that your first one is set at zero, second one is set at one, and then because we have two of them, we're changing the maximum count in our counter to be two. Now what I wanna do is make setup two and setup one visible in the patch graph. This is a lot quicker than if you were to open up each one and manually make each object inside of your canvas visible. This is just a slightly quicker way of doing that. Uh, so if I make setup one visible here, setup two visible here. Now, as you can see with some simulation, we can tap and alternate between frames, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, and now if I was to come back in here and adjust this one, and you'll see that is gone behind. So I can just scale this down resize it, place it wherever I like. And if I tap, it changes to this other frame at this other size, which is pretty cool. So now if I tap through again, you'll see that I have this original one with the four separate frames here. I can't scale this or move it in the same way because it's too many objects. I can do this, but it's just moving one of those border frames and now it's made it too big to, and it covers the screen. I can almost do it with this, but it's stretching out and it creates these weird distortions. So like I said, it's relatively easy to set this frame up with these four rectangles, but actually creating interactions uh, 
and changing the size or moving them around afterwards becomes more difficult the more cameras and the more frames you include in your sequence or your scene. So I would definitely recommend this version. It's a lot cleaner, a lot easier, and you can do stuff like this. So if I come back to our setup here and I highlight both of these, then I can duplicate the camera and the frame, drag them down into their own, like so that they're together, but still within the same setup. And now I can tap through so that this is visible. We'll make sure that everything's on the right layer. So our camera, the second camera has the right layer here. This has the right frame. Now, if I highlight both of these, then I can move them around. And look at that, I've duplicated the frame with the camera and it's super simple. And now I can highlight them both and move them around together. If I wanted to animate them to move in and out of the screen or pulse or change the size or scale, it's so much easier with just two rectangles than it is with four separate ones for your border and then one for the camera and duplicating that as many times as you need to. Uh, so yeah, basically that's it. There's very little uh, involved is just creating a template uh, and then importing it and adding some patch interactivity. Like I said at the start, the reason that it's white is so that you can add it to the alpha channel and implement like patches like this, the color cycle one, which just gives it uh, a little bit more of a unique quality. But that is basically the entire effect. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in some more of these template frames, then there's a link in the description to my Gumroad. I've created a Spark AR border frame template package. It's quite cheap, although there are tiers and you get more stuff if you pay a little bit more. Uh, the lowest tier though just includes this frame at 2.5% width, 5% width. Uh, there's the full frame for a single camera. There's a 2x2 grid for four cameras and a 3x3 grid for nine cameras. So that's one tier. And then I've also included some example projects that uh, have some tap to change features, a little bit of animation, if you're interested, if you wanna learn and download those projects, or just use them as templates, to, like as a jumping off point to save you some time so that you don't have to set up like this every time you create a new project. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll try and switch over to this camera, although I've been having some lag recently. I am wearing a different hoodie and it's much later in the day. <laughs> Please excuse that. My computer does not like me recording these videos. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like I said, there's a link in the description to my Gumroad. Feel free to check it out if you're interested. Uh, and otherwise, have a nice day. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Peace.